Welcome back to Love, Life, and Legacy, everybody, the podcast dedicated to helping you navigate these hypersexualized times. And in today's episode, I'm doing a bit of a solo cast. And by a bit, I mean I'm totally just talking by myself. And it's all about suffering. I really have been hearing this theme throughout the high noon world of the people going through our programs and such are worried so much about suffering, suffering what happens if I don't have this thing that's been bringing me joy, what happens, what happens, what happens? They're so worried about losing the comforts of their life that they're actually causing their own suffering in many ways. So in this episode, I really try to unpack the difference between short-term suffering and long-term suffering so that you can choose right and you can choose inconvenience in the moment over a lifetime of regret and shame. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. I am here today by myself. I am Benji naked, which means I am without my Benji. I am nude of my Benji. I'm just going to do a quick episode today because we are in the middle of a tour. We are doing a sub-regional tour here in America. This is the end of November, kind of end of 2022. And we're ideally next year going to be hitting up Europe. So if you're in Europe, please lobby all of your leaders, your friends, your parents, everybody to get High Noon over in Europe so we can do a sub-regional tour over there. Also simultaneously, by the way, we've been doing events all over America and Sammy and his wife are doing events all over Korea. So it's kind of like a busy talking time here for us. And so in and amongst all this workshop calamity, this workshop business, this workshop pandemonium, I wanted to make sure to get this out there because like here in High Noon, the staff, we're constantly talking with people. We're having one-on-ones with people. We take care of groups of people. And then we have these workshops. So we're always getting a very active feedback loop. And because of this, we have a very unique vantage point where we can see certain themes playing out again and again and again. And I really noticed a couple of weeks back that suffering was severely misunderstood within our community here. And the reason is this, people view suffering as something to avoid at all costs, especially when you get into the Western world where we've become very complacent. We've become very coddled in many ways to the extent that, you know, Uber Eats is a thriving organization. What is Uber Eats? or not just them, but like DoorDash, any of these companies, they thrive off of people's inability to even want to suffer the indignity, the consequences of having to put on pants. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to suffer through putting my legs through some cotton or denim or nylon or leather, depending on what I got in my wardrobe today and pulling them up so that I have to then walk out of my house, turn a key and drive to a restaurant where other people can make food for me. I can't even do that. That's too much suffering. I need to stick to what I know, which is lying in bed and having food shoveled in my face through some delivery service, right? So we've created a culture that's so avoidant of any form of suffering that all forms of suffering inherently by the nature of the fact that they even start with the S word, suffering, must be avoided. So I want to dispel this myth that all suffering is bad because some suffering, of course, is extremely painful, a death in a family, physical injury, what have you. These are all not pleasant. They're a part of life, but we wouldn't want to welcome them into our life, right? You wouldn't want any additional suffering in your life unless it was serving a purpose. And because a lot of people don't think of suffering as serving a purpose, then they try to avoid all suffering. I notice this very much in the group of guys that I'm taking care of. Again, because you get into people's lives when you serve them, when you hear their testimony, when you watch them day in and day out. And I notice that short-term suffering is usually the cause of great victories. When you allow short-term suffering into your life, it allows for you to grow your character, to develop your mind and spirit, so that over the long term, you actually suffer much less. 
Conversely, the opposite is very true as well. The more that you avoid suffering in the short term, the greater the suffering will be over the long term. Okay, and I'll try to come up with as many examples that will make sense as possible. So one is obviously food is an easy one. I don't want to suffer through eating healthy and going to get enough exercise at the gym or wherever to exercise, right? My body. That seems to be very difficult for the average person to eat the right foods and get the right amount of exercise. And because they feel like that suffering, like I don't have time, I don't want to sacrifice the money for a gym membership. I don't want to have to eat broccoli too much because that's gross. I'd much rather eat fried foods, what have you. That welcoming short-term suffering leads to long-term health problems, diabetes, obesity, all sorts of issues that arise when you don't eat well and you don't exercise enough. The greatest advice that you can ever get for your health, not that I'm qualified to give it, but what I, what I can iterate and reiterate from other health professionals is shop in the grocery store, not in the aisles, but go around the exterior because that's where all the fresh food is. That's what you want. You eat that stuff and then you exercise. You'll be pretty good. Decent margin of people will, that's enough for them, right? Let's talk about sexual integrity. The inconvenience and the suffering, it feels like you're suffering when you stop watching porn, right? Because that's been your safe place. It feels like you're suffering when you're not masturbating, which is why people will fight tooth and claw to justify this behavior because it feels good, so therefore it must be good. So when you take it away, when you remove that from your life, it obviously feels like suffering. Otherwise, why would it be so hard to get rid of? Why would you return to something that doesn't feel good? So it's suffering, but with a very narrow view of overall life suffering is. Because there's always a trade-off. If you're not suffering at least inconvenience in the short term, then what are you sacrificing in the long term? In the case of sexual integrity, sacrificing porn, taking it out of your life, removing it, removing masturbation from your life, allows you the freedom to then learn how to be intimate with yourself in a true way and to be intimate with other people and to stop running and hiding from difficult emotions and difficult situations. It allows you to grow your character. It allows you the time and energy and the bandwidth to start doing all the things that you want to do but never seem to have the time or energy to do. But if you don't sacrifice those things, porn and masturbation in particular, and if you view them as necessary, then the suffering over the long term will be much greater. You know, not being able to really fully experience what love has to offer, to not being able to fully experience what it's like to be comfortable in your own skin. I had a guy the other day who came up to me and he was pretty irate. I haven't seen him in a few years. And he came up to me and he was holding a little child. He wanted me to justify his behavior for him. He said, you know what? What happens? What happens? You know, when I when my wife doesn't have sex with me, like, what am I supposed to do? Why is porn so bad? Why is masturbation so bad? And I was like, look, I'm not here to tell you that what you're doing is bad. That's not my thing. That's like the grossest position is to go around with a pitchfork and say, I, I'll tell you what you need to do, my sweeties. <laughs> I don't want to be a witch or a warlock. I don't want to be anything like that. But I want to let you know that for sure, when you have these things in your life, you're sacrificing long-term, deep, important aspects of the human experience with real deep connection, real deep freedom where you have no chains that hold you back from being a fully expressed version of yourself. But when I was trying to answer him, he wasn't there to hear anything. So I just said, we should talk another time, <laughs> you know, because he wanted a quick answer to something really deep. But I could see it that for him, it was the only way that he could cope with the bigger suffering in his life, which was a lack of connection to his wife. And he felt like porn was giving him enough to get by. Kind of like your parents don't feed you and you eat the chicken food outside, the crumbs, the scraps outside. What he was trying to say is, isn't it okay to do this? And I really would love for you in this episode, if you could understand that suffering isn't always bad, Sometimes, in fact, it's necessary. Your first day of high school, I don't know if you remember it, it was suffering for everybody because everybody's new. Everybody's the youngest grade in the school where there's all these older, cooler kids. You don't really know yourself that well. You know, it's suffering. 
But you got to do stuff like that in life. You got to go through those difficult moments in order to become great, in order to become a more evolved version of yourself. If you avoid suffering, what you're actually avoiding is growth. Now, one perfect example of this is a guy that I'm working with who really has a tough time with his mornings because when he wakes up, he can't seem to get out of bed. He takes his phone and he just goes to La La Land. He goes and he zones out and then he really just regrets it. And then he just feels like, what's the point? And his whole day is kind of thrown away from the very beginning. And so I said, man, you know what you need to do? First thing out of bed, cold shower. Now, please understand that cold showers used to only be a religious act, like monks and priests, especially. You know, you look at the tradition of monks doing the lotus position in a stream of frigidly cold water as a way of transcending their body and the discomfort and to let their body suffer so that their minds can get stronger. People kind of left it in that realm for a long time, but science has proven that it's actually super healthy for you for so many different reasons, for your body, for your mind, for your spirit, for your heart. It's an enhancer of all good things. And it also incidentally trains you to have like a strong mind and a strong spirit. I kind of prescribe this to this guy because what if the first thing that you do in your day showed you that you're a powerful person, showed you that you can do uncomfortable things victoriously. And not only can you, but you can do them well. How does that set you up for your day? Instead of the first thing that you do is to completely fail yourself. Because for him, it's like he didn't want to do it. And then he did do it. He, he ended up watching, you know, whatever, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. He was stuck on his phone. First thing, it felt like a failure. And that was the foundation for his day. How miserable is that, right? So although it feels like suffering, this is such a great example. It will always feel like suffering in the beginning when you start doing cold showers because all you can feel is how cold the water is. But the more that you let go of your concept of what suffering is and you embrace it as a training mechanism for your spirit, for your mind, then all of a sudden you stop feeling the cold. It sounds like madness, but it's true. I've been doing cold showers for about 13 years. I stopped within those 13 years for maybe a year or two because I felt like, oh, maybe I graduated from them. But then I realized I just come up with a really clever way of weaseling out of something that I need. But I pretended like I didn't need it. But then I got back on it. And now I do it. Every time I have a shower, I always end with a cold shower. The reason is this, every time I really, really don't want a cold shower, it's exactly in proportion to the amount of complacency that my body wants me to experience. So if I've been lazy about meditation, it's harder to have a cold shower. If I've been eating more junk food than I'd like, it's harder to have a cold shower because your overall integrity impacts your overall lifestyle. So your sexual integrity, your physical health integrity, your ability to get up and do the things that you say you're going to do in your day, that type of integrity, it's all interlinked. So if you have victory in any area, then it can have a cascading effect in all the other areas. But if you begin to feel like a failure in one area, guess what? That also starts to filter into the other areas of your life. So if you reframe suffering, okay, I'm not talking about masochism here. I'm not talking about punishing yourself. That's not ever healthy, right? I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, The Da Vinci Code, I think. And there's that priest, the evil priest, and he flogs himself. Every time he hurts somebody or kills somebody, then he punishes himself. That's insanity. That's sadomasochism. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is knowing when to let go of inconvenience, which is perceived suffering, but is actually just inconvenience for the sake of strengthening yourself, for the sake of developing more mind-body unity. Doing something that isn't easy, it's harder over the short term, but that will make you stronger, that will make you better. If you can identify the areas in your life where you're being weak, where you're being lazy, where you're being complacent, and look at what could I be doing to make myself stronger in that area, I guarantee you 
whatever it is that you should be doing will feel like suffering in the beginning, whether it's eating healthier foods and putting down the French fries and eating salad on the side instead, right? It feels hard, whether it's deleting YouTube from your phone or Instagram or all social media. I don't know if you've ever tried, but if you just delete all social media from your phone, you know what's crazy? You don't die. You don't die. You keep on living. Life goes on. And actually, you realize how much time you've just been wasting in these apps. I'm not saying you have to. I'm not saying it's a great idea. But for some people, it's a great challenge to do that if you find that social media is holding you back. So to look at the areas in your life that are not going well, And to start looking at, well, what's a good prescription for me in terms of like a change of behavior in this area? It'll be perceived suffering, but if I do it, I'll be stronger. So I think it's worth looking at because one thing I personally realize is like my discipline and my integrity is really fantastic when I'm here in my house, when I'm here in my domicile, in the place where I dwell. But on the road, because I've been traveling more lately, my God, I will eat more snacks than I typically do and more unhealthy snacks. I'll kind of justify having another handful of chips or whatever, because there's a bowl of them right there at the event or whatever the case may be. And I realize, oh, this is a problem. And also meditating and praying in the evening and in the morning becomes difficult. So now I realize I have to make certain moves. I have to be careful when I'm on the road so that I don't lose my standard when I'm on the road. So if you can look for these areas in your life that are not up to snuff, they're not up to your standard, and then you up the ante in terms of like what you can be doing, I guarantee you it'll feel like suffering. But if you do that, it'll stop feeling like suffering and you'll realize that it's like taking vitamins for your soul. To go back with when I don't have cold showers, I don't feel right. Cold showers help me to get realign myself to the person that I'm committed to being. So it's a wonderful tool to reorient my integrity. So please find those things, look for them in your life if you really want to grow and understand it'll all feel like suffering in the short term, but in the long term in your life, it'll feel tremendous and you'll end up having much more freedom and sovereignty as a human being. So good luck with that. I know this is a shorter one, but I hope you could endure it. Suffering even means not having a tab open while you're in a meeting with somebody and just listening to them, right? It means telling the truth. It means all sorts of things, but in the end, it's not suffering at all. It's just committing to the person that you say you want to be. So God bless you guys. I'm glad we could have this conversation and I'll see you next time.